bring you another review. It's been so long since I had to say that, man. It feels good. It feels great. And uh, this time, uh, it is a movie review. And this one is of um, Iron Man 3. Opening weekend, your boy Alert Wolf went and seen the thing. And I'm going to give you my take on it. Now, this review is going to be broken down into two parts. A review basically as a movie fan. And at this point, you're going to get my synopsis up to a point. This is going to be a little different than my normal movie reviews. Usually, I don't like to give away too many things and just get the ball started before I start describing it. Okay, the second half of this review is my review for comic book fans. Now, there, you're going to get my reasons why. There's two halves of this review, and that's going to have its own review. It's going to have its basically its own rating. Each section is going to have a, a rating, and I'll give it a group rating. Um, again, a little different, but let me warn you right now. When I say it is... There's going to be some spoilers in the beginning. I, I just give away some of the beginning of the movie. But when I get to the comic book review part of this uh, review, there is going to be a lot of spoilers. So I'm going to tell you right now. When it gets to that part, if you haven't seen the movie, do not watch the movie. Do not watch the end of this because... I'm going to give away almost everything. Uh, and I'm going to assume that if you stick around for my second half of the review, you've seen this movie. That this will be your only warning. So, uh, alright, let me jump right into it. I'll give you just basically how the movie starts out. The movie starts out, you get a couple of scenes, and it's Tony narrating the movie. Uh, things have gone bad, it suits are exploding, you know. And he's, he has to tell you how this all began. And it's a story about how he... You, you, you tend, you, without even realizing it, he, he, he caused problems. Um, and so we get we get a flashback. It's I think it's 1999. Uh, it's that it's a, a concert. Uh, it's concert. It's a uh, it's New Year's Eve and it's a convention in Switzerland. Um, there we get introduced to the. He, he's with Happy. Happy has long hair. I think I think Happy just started protecting him. Uh, we also get introduced to a uh, a new female character, um, a new female character for the again for for moviegoers, Maya, uh, who's a uh, biogeneticist, and uh, you know they have a little thing, and this geeky nerdy guy named Aldrich, uh, I forget his last name, something with a K. Hold on, give me a second. But uh, you know all. Basically, yeah, 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 let me, I'm trying to think of this, uh, right, 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 Kill, uh, Killian, alright, all right, there we go, and, uh, you, again, now, if you guys are comic book fans, you'll recognize these names, it's part of the extremist plot, extremist plot, but, um, I'm not gonna get too far into that, again, that's the later half of my review. So, basically, um, at, you know, he, he agrees to, you know, he want, he's trying to get Maya and uh, Tony on board to his new project, Advanced Idea Mechanics. I mean, uh, AIM. And again, for those of you who don't know the comic, uh, well, I, I'm not, I don't want to give too much away, but it's just starting. He's just, he's starting it, and he's, he wants them on board on the ground floor. Uh, Tony says, you know, I'll meet you upstairs in like 20, on the roof in 20 minutes. And of course he's not, because he's going to sleep with, you know, the chick. And he does, and then there's, there you go, that sets up the conflict. Because now, uh, what's his face was left out in the cold, and he, you know, all night basically, and nothing ever happened. So flash forward, it's the present. Now, uh, this movie's going to have a lot of strong undertones of, um, bullying as an anti-bully message. Uh, the other thing about this movie is it's set during Christmas. Right? You know, the opening was New Year's Eve. Um, I believe it was, it was either New Year's Eve or a Christmas party. And now it's Christmas now. It, it, it's around Christmas time. He's getting pepper presents and, you know, um, Tony Stark basically after, after the events 
from the Avengers uh, is left a little a little messed up, and he's working a lot, and he hasn't slept in several days, and he can't eat, uh, you know, and uh, you, you get the, the difference in changing of the relationships. Happy's now uh, Piper's, uh, or Piper, excuse me, Pepper's um, bodyguard, and she gets a meeting from basically uh, a new, uh, from an old friend who is Eldritch. He's not, he, you know, I mean, before it looked like he may have had some sort of debilitating disease. He doesn't have it anymore. He's handsome. He looks good. And uh, he's clearly trying to pick up uh, Pepper. Happy tries to warn Tony. Tony really doesn't take it too seriously. Now, we also get uh, he pitches her the basis of uh, of, a, of rewriting genetic code. Um, now, if you pay attention to the beginning of the movie, this is what Maya was talking about. So obviously, you get the impressions they may be working together. Um, and then you have uh, you also get Tony testing his new armor, which is the Mark 42. So uh, this one, and he injects himself with things uh, so he can control the armor with with his mind and bio rhythms and it flies to him and he, he's, it's, it's still a prototype so he still has some kinks to work out and so you know Tony's developing the technology to control these things uh, psychically uh, at the same time we are seeing the rise of the Mandarin and he's putting out Osama Bin Laden style videos he is uh, performing attacks and all and all sorts of things he's threatening the President of the United States and, he, and he's ratcheting it up until Christmas. Uh, ben Kingsley plays him, and he, he's really cool looking. And in case you're wondering, he's the guy from one, maybe with a new actor. Uh, I, I don't want to give away too much, but a little spoiler warning, he's not. Uh, he is in charge of the Ten Rings, though, and there you go. And you, you even see him sitting there in the commercials with the rings. Um... So there, there you go. Uh, there's a scene with War Machine gets rebranded to the Iron Patriot, uh, and uh, he's eating at a restaurant. Kids asking for his autograph. They talk, talk about the wormholes in New York, and he and he has a panic attack, and that's what's going down with Tony, and that's his mental dilemma. Uh, and basically, you know, it's all about the Mandarin's escalating plots, so to speak. Uh, I don't want to give away any more of this movie. Um, like I said, the movie has a very big anti-bullying campaign leached in there. Um, Plot-wise, you know, it's about his relationship with uh, Pepper. It's about, uh, you know, a little bit of Maya, the, the, uh, what's going down with the Mandarin, and, and I, I don't want to give away too much. Um, but, you know, he, he gets brought down uh, to a level where he has to become innovative and uh, he's not the strongest guy on the block. Let's put it like that. Um, now, if I was not a comic book fan of Iron Man, and, uh, and not that Iron Man's one of my favorite characters, because he's not, but if I wasn't a comic book fan of Iron Man and know just what I know from the films... This one had a more darker feel. You can tell by the uh, the trailers, almost like a Dark Knight, the last Dark Knight movie. Uh, I mean, not as epic as that. Um, I think I'd give this movie a three and a half out of. You know what? I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I mean, it wasn't as good as Iron Man one. It was cooler. You got to see a lot. Obviously, I'm not giving this away. But if the new armor in this movie is called 42. Then there are, then you get to see multiple armors, which is pretty cool. Uh, the flying armor thing is is, is good. Uh, so, I mean, but there are things that people didn't, you know, that uh, the people who saw the movie and aren't comic book fans probably didn't like. But there is an extra scene at the end of this movie. I'm not going to give that away. So stick around after the credits. Now, I think. The minuses is the heavy-handedness uh, are basically, first let's go, 
it's a Christmas movie not being released at Christmas. So that kind of, it just feels wrong when you're watching the movie. It really does. It throws you, because you're not in Christmas mode. Um, two, it is very heavy-handed, this anti-bullying stuff that is the plot of the movie. It's basically and the, the repercussions of being a bully, anti-bully, the whole thing, both subtly and not so subtle. Um, and people's misconceptions and stuff like that. Like I said, it's not the best. Actually, this movie, I'm going to say, out of the three movies, is probably the worst one, honestly. It's probably my third favorite. But that's not to say I didn't absolutely love this film. I did. I enjoyed every second sitting in that theater, watching it in 3D. Every second of the movie. Alright, now folks, that was my movie review. Now I'm going to get into this as if I was a comic book fan of Iron Man. So again, warning, if you have not seen this movie and you thought, you know, I, I gave away stuff before, I'm going to get into the nitty gritty and you're going to know things you don't want to know if you haven't seen this movie. So again, if you haven't seen this, uh, turn it off now, click, click up the like button, leave me a comment, and then watch the movie and watch the rest of this video. <laughs> All right. And subscribe too, why not? Alright, so now let me get to the comic book app. If I was a comic book fan of Iron Man, and uh, or a big fan of Iron Man, this movie would infuriate Iron Man fans. Let me say that one more time. Infuriate them. Okay, they took the plot of Extremis, and they took the idea of the Mandarin, and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm starting to watch this movie and I'm getting some Mandarin, some extremist elements. I'm like, are they really doing, like, in my head, I didn't think they were going to do extremists. And I'm like, all right, this is badass. The Mandarin with extremists, you know, the seeds are there to make something really great. But they didn't do either. Right. Um, and let me explain something. The Mandarin is, is, I would say, arguably, maybe not so arguably, the biggest Iron Man villain. The equivalent to Lex Luthor and the Joker, to Superman and Batman. You know, a big, and Magneto for the X-Men or something like that. We're talking, this is a number one, top notch, you know, the villain for Iron Man. And you get so excited. Ben Kingsley, the Mandarin, he could add so much to that. And you see the rings, and they look like the rings from one. And you're like, I don't know if he's the same guy. Maybe he's a different guy, but this could be good. And you're, you're so excited, and he's making these videos, and you're thinking to yourself, eventually, they're going to fight, and it's going to be magic versus... And for those of you who don't know, the Mandarin got his rings. There are ten alien rings uh, from alien dra a race of alien immortal dragons, right? Who, like Thor, the technology is so far advanced that these rings appear to be magic. Similar to how Thor's rings work on that level. So it is super technology, but it's so far ahead, they appear to be magic rings. So it's like mysticism and magic, and he can perform spells with them, versus technology, opposites. Woo! And then they threw AIM in there, and then AIM is, and then somehow the Mandarin's running AIM. Uh, and you're like, Mandarin running AIM? Really? He's sor science, he sorcery? I'm like, all right, whatever, whatever. And then you find out it's like this movie's like and I've said this before it's like going to getting excited to see the Joker as the villain of Batman because of all the trailers you've seen you go and watch the movie and find out there is no Joker it's just some dude the Riddler hired uh, to dress up as the Joker and he made it up and it was never a Joker that's what you get here folks I'm sorry there is no Mandarin 
He's just, there's no Mandarin. It is basically, the Mandarin is fake. He doesn't exist. There is no epic magic battle. So that's a big fuck you to the fans. It's a big fuck you. Why would you do that? I guess there's not that many Iron Man fans. And they didn't think they had traditional Iron Man fans. And they didn't think they that mattered. And then, okay, fine. So the big fuck you to the idea and concept of, of the mansion. Now, many of us have grew up on Iron Man. We may not be the biggest fans of Iron Man, but we know who the Mandarin is. But for the more, the younger fan, the extremist story is hands down one of the best Iron Man stories of all time. If you haven't read it, read it. As a matter of fact, on Netflix, they have this, the animatic of it, which is like the animated comic book, the motion comic of, of extremists. Voice acting, motion comic. That's how I, that's how I watch the thing. I didn't even read the comic. I watched it on Netflix. Great story. And that's the story that they butchered and hacked in this. Forget about AIM for a second, because this isn't even AIM. I don't consider them AIM. It's not. It, it's horrible. Forget about AIM. Because AIM is supposed to be the sciency, ver an evil sciency version of like, of like, uh, uh, of S.H.I.E.L.D. They're like an evil organization of scientists, right? Super science. You have MODOK as the big villain. I, for a second, thought they were going to bring it out because they kept referring to the Master, and then you find out the Mandarin's fake, and I'm like, is there a MODOK? No. That doesn't happen. And and that's fine, because I would never want to see MODOK in a movie. He's a big, giant face on a chair, a little dicky, like, mini, mini raptor arms and legs. and But whatever. Um, then, they don't even do extremists right. They do do some nods. There are some scenes that are directly from the comic book. Peppered in peppered into this movie. Ah, fun. But in this movie. They even do some some things where listen. The villain, too, of the extremist comic book, the main guy, you do they do do they do show you a guy very similar to him in this movie. And he, and he, it's like a, and he doesn't live. He's a human bomb. He dies. And then they don't even do the story right. In the original story, that guy uh, gets injected with the super soldier formula, basically. And it's it's Maya's version of it, anyway. And he's he's almost as strong as Superman. This guy, you know, the Marvel attempt at him, and he's crazy and he's a bad guy, and he beats the living hell out of Tony wearing the armor. Now, whereas these guys can give anybody in an armor a run for the money, they don't have the extreme superpowers that the comic book villain that they made up just for that particular comic has. So, so they didn't even do that right. And it was a weird dream of, like, having your guy in the White House of political favors, like, it... The plot was kind of shitty. It really was. Like, he just he wanted revenge, but then he, the guy he was putting in the Y... Yeah, the, the plot kind of fell apart a little bit. But, like, really, what is his ultimate play here? You would have power and influence. I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. And then there's story holes, too, because... Um, if the Mandarin's fake, and he controls the Ten Rings, and the guy that kidnapped Tony and won was a member of the Ten Rings organization, right? Or the Ring, some Ring organization, I forget the exact name, but I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. That leaves a big gaping hole, plot hole right there. Because was Elric responsible too for Tony's kidnapping? Did he, did he somehow take over that organization after that first guy we thought maybe would become the manager and died. I mean, there's a lot of, like, there's a huge gap that you're like, I have no idea how that happens. But, again, the action was good. The special effects were amazing. The acting was good. Uh, ben Kingsley was amazing, even though he was a fake Mandarin. Um, I loved him. Absolutely loved him. He was hilarious. But, again, as a comic book fan would be super angry to do that 
to such a great character and to ha cast such a great actor to play that character only to have him turn out to be this cheap knockoff. Yeah, as a comic book fan, fan, I'd be furious. So, as a comic book fan, I'm going to give this okay. So, it's a two and a half out of five as a comic book fan. And I'm being generous because the other elements of the movie are good. So, all together, I'm going to give this movie. So, from the comic book. And I, again, you guys are probably going to watch this thing and think, Blur Wolf hated this movie. And remember, I keep saying I absolutely love this movie. I am not that big of an Iron Man fan, but I know enough about Iron Man to know that if I were a huge Iron Man fan, I'd be furious. I'm just saying. So, from a moviegoer standpoint, from what you expect in the action, maybe a four-ish to a three and a half to a four. From a comic book fan, two and a half out of five. Now, if you're both and you're sitting there with one or the other, I don't know. Having said all that, do I recommend seeing this movie, even if you're a comic book fan? And the answer is yes. It's still cool. It was still a cool movie to watch. Uh, well worth it in 3D. Uh, again, never pay full price for a movie. Use coupons, matinee or something. But... Uh, there's still a lot of action in it. It's still good. It has some heart to it, the movie. It has some darkness to it. Um, and it's still worth seeing. Plus, there's an extra scene. And you get the idea this is completing the, the trilogy for Iron Man. Uh, and, and then this will lead into the next Avengers. Uh, by the way, you also got a trailer of uh, Thor. And that was... It looks like Thor's going to be really cool. So... You know, I can't wait for Thor in November. And, uh, you know, again, guys, happy free comic book day. Remember, uh, that was today. So I'm sure by now all the comic book shops are closed. I hope you had fun on your free comic book day. And I'm sure if you go tomorrow, they're still, they still have some of those free books. They didn't get all, they didn't get rid of them all. But uh, this is Alert Wolf. Uh, I think I'm just going to get out of here. So this is Alert Wolf saying, click it up if you like it. Comment if you must. And please, please, please subscribe if you can. And I am signing out.